Greetings. Welcome to the ride. I see you've selected our language floor. I hope you'll be able to learn some new words that you can actually use in mixed company. Now, how many contestants are there? Ah, three. I hope we don't go over our weight capacity. Is this the first ride for any of you? Oh, good. It's always fun to share the ride with the newcomer. We will also be sharing some instructions so you won't get lost along the way. So pay attention. Player one, how many languages do you speak? Thanks a lot. Player two, how thank you very much. Player three, how many languages do you speak? Yes, thank you. Player one, feast your eyes on the letter Q. This is your buzzer. That's Q, as in Hubert. Player two, please use the letter B as your buzzer. That's B, as in Beulah. Player three, you'll be using P as your buzzer. P, as in Prairie Oyster. Enjoy the ride. See you at the bottom. It's time for the show where high culture and pop culture collide. This episode of You Don't Know Jack, The Ride, is brought to you by Ye old Booze Shoppy. Slurring your speech since 1777. And now, here's your host, the one, the only, Cookie! Hey, welcome to the game! So, you like the foul language, huh? Well, that's just great. I'll try my best. Okay, first off, gotta give you your screws. Here's a bunch for all three of you. Now listen up, and I'm gonna tell you why I'm passing these out. The first time a question comes up that you think might be on the difficult side, buzz in immediately and start pounding on the S key. That's S for screws. You're gonna be shooting these puppies into the screen, totally annihilating the question and answers. Then you're gonna make your opponent answer the question whether they can read any of it or not. So if you're not the one pounding on the S key, you better be trying to read everything fast before it's gone. And that's Flackjack. <laughs> All right, get ready to ride, and hey, watch your language. Player three, what's this one worth to you? Buzzing and juicy. Coming up. Gossip, the international language. Ah, gossip. You know, in my experience, if there's one thing that loosens lips, it's alcohol. And, uh, it looks like ye old booze shop left some samples here. Hmm, what to do? Probably not a good idea for me to toss back a few brewskis during this game, but hey, they're free and I'm thirsty. You don't mind, right? Now, oh, what the heck. Alright, let's get going. If your click started speaking one of the click languages, where would be the most appropriate place for you and your friends to hang out and gossip? Rural America, Australia, Asia, or Africa? Player one, hit it! No, but I was watching this educational show last night, and I learned that the word for beer in Australia is Foss... Taz? <laughs> Player two, it's your... Three, make it. <laughs> uh. Well, it looks like you need to start running around with a smarter crowd. The click languages, which incorporate clicking sounds for some of their consonants, are African languages. At least that's what I heard from Billy. Player three, it's all on your shoulders. Buzz in and give us a value. I like to call this category. We will bury you with a foreign tongue. Okay, prepare yourself. $3,417 is on the line here. And the question is... Suppose English language episodes of Kukla, Fran, and Ollie were to be broadcast in Russia. If heard by Russians who didn't speak English, what would the title sound like? Doll, blah, 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 blah. Mother, blah, blah. All yours, player. Kukla is Russian for doll. And I'm guessing Russian viewers of Kukla, Fran, and Ollie will be thrilled. These are probably the best special effects they've ever seen. Player one, you have the honors. I think we can work with that, and here's your category. Watch your language! Okay, get ready to buzz in and type out your answer on this one. If you had to type the subject of this question, what word would you type? 
Your move, player two. Well, this is gonna be a buzzkill. Well, here you go. Yeah, let's see what you get. And if you look to your left, you'll see the popular wrong answer. Ooh. It's all about you. You is the subject of the question. In it, you is doing the action. Jeez, I thought I was the one drinking around here. Okay, player two, what's this one? Well, player two, you could pad your wallet here a bit or burn a hole in it. Your choice. Player one, player three, step aside. Player two, it's dis or dat time. And this dis or dat question's category is... A picture's worth a thousand ones and zeros. Okay, I'm gonna show you seven words, and for each one, I want you to tell me if it's... A computer language or a spoken language. If computers speak it, press 1. If people speak it, press 2. If you're kind of clueless, hit 4. You're going to get some money for each right answer. And you're going to lose some for each one you get wrong or that you don't get to. Okay, you have 30 seconds to get all of them. And keep an eye on the wire. When it fills up, you're done. Let's do it. Basic computers. Arabic. Sanskrit. Football. Mandarin Fortran Sanskrit Cobalt Fortran Well, you got five right, which is sort of like, eh, eh. You know what I'm saying? Well, let's throw that cash into your total. Player two, you got the lead. Okay, player three, hit your buzzer. Here's your category. A royal pain in the patoot. You ready? Let's go. In what activity would the Queen's English do her the most good? Doing shots, shooting pool, playing cards, or chewing tobacco? Player one. Is that an eight ball in your pocket, or are you just happy to see me? English is a term used in pool or billiards to describe the spin a player puts on a ball when his or her highness hits it off center. Speaking of spinning, what's up with the room right now? Player one, please buzz in and let us know how much this one's gonna be worth. Oh god, here's your category. The things that come out of your mouth. Okay, play ball. Suppose you want to use an idiom, but instead you end up spouting an ilium. What's come flying out of your mouth? An Eskimo dwelling, a piece of small and take a shot. Okay. All right, player one, time to play multiple guests because you've just been screwed. Pick two, you sure about that? Well, it's too late now. The ilium is part of your small intestine, and I'll tell you, spitting it out makes for a really sparkling dinner conversation. So then I says to him, I says, <laughs> Nice work, player two. You just screwed yourself. <laughs> player one, it's up to you. Snag a question value for us. Oh. Oh, here's your category. Do you have Marv Albert in a can? Ugh, I can't get the image of that guy hacking up part of his small intestine out of my mind. Anyway, see if you can complete this analogy. <clears throat> I mean, uh, analogy. Yeah, there you go. Marv Albert is to... Yes! As Fat Albert is... Player two, grab it! Yahtzee! Marv Albert says, Yes! Fat Albert, no relation, says, Hey, hey, hey! Player two, what's this one gonna be worth? Hit your buzzer and tell us. It's dead, it's disgusting, it's roadkill. 
Okay, let me explain how this game works. You're gonna see different pairs that are somehow related. And you're gonna get a bunch of items that may or may not connect the pair. Plus, and if you think an item correctly joins the pair. There's a thousand bucks in it for you if you're right, but beware, you lose a thousand every time you're wrong. And at the end, there's gonna be a bonus question worth some bonus cash. Uh, let's just say you should pay close attention to all the correct answers. Is that clear? Good, let's hit it. Blank radio in parental sex speech equals the blank. What's the common link between these two? Fish equals blank fish and charms blank pop. Take the bait and small snack. Score. Family affair butler and blanks mustard. Salt for animals, it's what's he pop test. Lucky blank baka and blank the fat. They rock and roll all night and light touch. Score. Okay, it's bonus time. What do all the correct answers have in common? Are they all foul language? What are you doing with your back? Player two, money in the bank. They're all things you do with your mouth, like drink. So here's to you. Player two's our leader. Okay, here we go. Player two, pick us a question value. Your category is... Speak slowly, they're not from around here. Yeah, s slow it down a little. I'm just, you know, I just, I just need you to slow it down. Imagine as player three, do it. <laughs> oh, wouldn't you know it, you're wrong. Maybe next time you won't buzz in so damn fast. <laughs> Majel. No, that's the stuff that keeps Spock's hair looking so good. <laughs> you know? I mean, he's got that head of hair on him. <laughs> Big layer two, it's you. Linkos is, um, it's a language that was, was created in the, the 1960s. <coughs> that supposedly allows us to communicate with any being anywhere in the universe. So when they make jokes about toilet paper and, and Klingons, everyone will get it. Toilet paper, Klingons. <laughs> oh, it's so good. Okay, player two, grab a question value, buzz in. Okay, give it up for... You speak with a forked hand. You know, I consider myself a pretty lucky guy. I mean, I've got this job hosting a game show and stuff, and you know, though, the one thing that, that didn't work out was when I asked Wheel of Fortune to lend me Vanna White for a show, and they got all like... Well, anyway. Say a contestant on a Wheel of Fortune crosses her fingers for good luck. What might viewers familiar with dactylology think she's saying? I wish Vanna success and happiness. I would like an R, please. Player one, hit it! In dactylology or finger spelling, you make an R by crossing your first two fingers. And if she has her middle fingers extended toward Pat, well, yeah, we can all guess she won't be returning for tomorrow's show. Okay, player one, pick a winner. Hey, Flash.
Josh, nice buzzing. Here's a category for you. Guitar Rock of Ages. Yeah, man. All right. Rock and roll. Woo! Okay. <clears throat> if if all the music on classic rock stations had to be, it, it has to be. It doesn't have any choice in the matter. Player three, make it happen. Okay, player one, you, you picked three. Hmm. Old English, come on, be nice. The, the who haven't been around that long, but I've always felt a, a deep connection with Keith Moon. Yeah, Keith! <laughs> player two, player two, grab it! All right, class, translate the following. Hey, hey, mama said the way you move, gonna make you sweat, gonna make you groove. Latin and Greek are known as the classical languages. Rock! Player two, hit me! Okie doke, let's check out the category. Dry heaves sound worse than nails on a chalkboard. Um, yeah, dry heaves. Oh, God. Ugh. Okay, okay, let's just let's just get through this question. Everything's everything's cool. Everything's cool. Which of these slang terms for <clears throat> regurgitation is not a good example of on onomatopoeia? Barf. Hurl. Player one. Billy. Here. Sarah. Here. Raul. Uh, he's not here. <laughs> player, player two, it's yours. I don't. Monopia is a word that imitates or uh, it sounds like the, 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 the object or the action or whatever. Oh, I tried to hold it back. Okay, let me tell you something. Upchuck is is definitely not the sound that happens when you throw up. Mm. When did I eat corn? The makers of You Don't Know Jack would like to remind you that excessive drinking on the job can only lead to emotional torment and physical pain. All right, player two, buzz in, give us a value. Welcome to the Jack Attack. I'm gonna be throwing a bunch of words up on the screen. Buzz in when you see two items on the screen that match. Each time you're right, you make money. Each time you're wrong, you lose it. Now here's the thing. Not any two items that go together are necessarily a match. Remember the key. It's gotta be a match that fits this clue. Time for your sentencing. Don't forget, the match has to fit that clue. Good luck. Buzz in! Way to be a risk taker! This week on the James Brown Celebrity Scrabble Tournament, the Godfather of Soul takes on former child star Rusty O'Dean. What? 
57 points. H W U N A W U H. What? That's not a word. In a minute, jump back. Come on, this isn't fair. I did what they did. You better. Come on, Tuesday after Hallie McNeil. This is for my Baptist minister, who instilled in me at a very young age the evils of alcohol, tobacco, and firearms. This is for the kids at school, who by refusing my friendship, forced me to adapt and infiltrate any and all social cliques. This is for my older brother, whose bad taste in music gave me a CD collection large enough to drive any person under siege insane. I'm proud to be an officer for the ATF. We raid more homes and violate more constitutional rights by 9 a.m. than most criminals do in a day. The ATF, keeping our country free for you and me. Bring nature to your bathroom with Twigs and Lee.